Good morning, everybody. And I got my little uh, <clears throat> micro fox this morning. I'm going to get on the computer here shortly, and we're going to program this thing. Uh, show you just what I got in the package. He had it. Nice, nice package here. I don't care if people look at you. Try to cover up the ad disc. You want my ad disc sheet? <laughs> it's in there. Anyway, so he had it in that. He sent it with the antenna. This is a, I don't like the number. It's a NA666. Yeah, I don't, don't like that number. But it's just a, there's like two meter. Because this right here only does 140 through 150 megahertz. So that's all you need. So you got that. And this actually had a little rubber cap on top of the SMA I've already took off. And I'm not sure where I laid it. So but it's not real big. But anyway, so you got that, the antenna, Bionics Micro Fox MAF-15, 2 meter, 15 milliwatt Fox Hunt transmitter. All right, and that firmly seat programming plug while programming, we're going to figure that out because I got the uh, programming plug with it, which looks like it's just like an audio jack, 2 USB or something, 3.5 millimeter. No, it's 2.5. All right. Well, let me go fire the computer up. Let's see if we can program this thing. Good morning, everybody. PJ here. AK4PJ. I got my little uh, fox hunt transmitter. And it's a little different than what you've seen in the pictures. I cut some of that little casing off. Made it a little shorter just so I can get the battery out easy while it's in this that made me a little thing but I just want to show it off here it's a micro fox FM-15 15 milliwatt fox hunt transmitter and I've got it in a piece of inch and a quarter PVC with a couple of caps got me a little lanyard I could hang it up on a limb in a tree or whatever and the little on off switch there and it's got the little antenna there and then that just goes right down in there like that that'd be the whole package now I had to modify the top to make it flat the little uh, these end caps were rounded off so I had to do a little modifying to do that but I was going to put it in this box right here I made a 12 volt battery out of two six volt uh, ear feeder battery uh, running series here and I probably still could but that just seemed like overkill it says it'll run 20 hours on this little 9 volt battery but uh, I'm gonna set up here and I'm gonna show you how easy this thing is to program and I don't know how well you're gonna see my computer screen because I don't have a way to put it to the uh, the phone or anything so you're gonna see reflections and all that stuff uh, I've got the data cables already hooked up to the computer uh, and it's just a little 2.5 uh, stereo jack I don't know if you can see that yeah and that's all it all it takes to program it uh, but I'm gonna show you how to get to it because it's really easy it don't come with instructions uh, instructions are actually on the computer and the way they spell this is it's bionics with a Y whoops <laughs> looking through the camera you might want to spell it right. <laughs> here, I got it right there. And then their website right here. And you just go down and find what you got, which mine's that Micro Fox transmitter. They got different ones that you can get. And this is the one I got here. So it's got the user manual. It's right here. Then the software is right here to uh, program it 
Uh, we'll look at the uh, the manual here just for a second. Hopefully you can see this good. And I won't read this. If you want to read it, uh, just go to the website and look. But basically it's for 144 megahertz and uh, up to 148, so two meter. Uh, you can move anywhere on in the simplex or wherever uh, you can transmit uh, with five kilohertz steps it says the mf-15 should run at 50 percent duty cycle for about 20 hours on a fresh battery so that's where i was going to put it on that 12 volt battery i'm going to see how long that nine volt battery lasts uh, we'll see and when you bring up the software it's going to have it's going to look like this right here i didn't change anything on here it's using uh, 146.565 that was the uh, default uh, only thing i had to change was this uh, morse code id and i used my call sign for that which is ak4pj uh it's at 20 words a minute uh let's see and there's other things you can do with it. You can set, like I didn't set the initial delay. <clears throat> I might actually set that because right now, as soon as I turn it on, it starts transmitting as soon as you flip the switch. So I might, you know, make that at least like, I don't know, 30 seconds or a minute or something. So that way it don't just start ID and right away. Uh, see, default settings that appear when the configuration program is started are recommended for a basic hunt with the MF-15 transmitting tones for 15 seconds and then a Morse code ID. It then will stop transmitting and repeat every 30 seconds. The only settings users must change is the Morse code ID text to their assigned amateur radio call sign. After the desired options, select the configuration cable COM port, connect the cable to the 2.5 millimeter jack on the MF-15, being sure to push the plug all the way in. Power the MF-15 via a battery and turn on power switch. And click right configuration to apply the settings. And it's pretty straightforward. They got a schematic to show how they've put it together. So I guess if you wanted, because you can add somewhere in here, it tells you that you can uh, add a GPS uh, little uh, right here. Firmware in the F. MF-15 can be user updated and a serial GPS receiver can be added to con convert it into a low power APRS <laughs> let me speak APRS transmitter suitable for a high altitude balloon. So that's pretty cool. So it's actually versatile if you wanted to add that to it you could uh, and I'm sure you could probably find one of those pretty easy. Uh, let's see says your choice of antenna directly affects the detectable range of the transmitter and you may find that a SMA stub antennas designed for 2.4 gigahertz transmitters or other electrically short transmitters can reduce the range if you so desire. There is no danger of the MF-15 from using a poorly matched antenna. So that's good to know. So that way if I wanted to I could actually uh, lessen the range of it uh, with this little antenna I got now. I tried Roger and he got like a S7 at a quarter of a mile away. That's pretty good. Uh, so I don't know how much attenuation you'd need to actually find this thing. Uh, so I might need to play with that just a little bit. But let's go to the uh, program software. And I, like I say, it's right here and I've already downloaded it, unzipped it. Uh, you just click on the Microfox configure program, configuration program. Uh, oops, hit it twice. So let's see. Find out where I got it at. I didn't save it. Uh, it's right here. So once I you unzip it, uh, it's this Microfox Configure 1.65 application. Just click on that. Let's try double clicking it, and then this will come up. And this is the software. Uh, to do this, I actually modified this little this little plastic piece on here that come with it, and I just drilled a hole in it so that way I can just stick the uh, 
data cable right in there. So that's what I'm going to do. It's not powered up or anything yet. So I'm going to go ahead and click that in. So it's just like that. And like I say, I've already programmed this, but uh, we're going to do it again. So just to show, because what I'm actually going to do is this initial delay. Uh, let's do here. Let's do 30 seconds at least. I don't want to make y'all wait too long. So that way we'll see if it applies. I got to change where it says Microfox. Every time you open that up, I don't know if you can see that. Let me try to zoom in here. Okay. And sorry, like I say, you're going to see the grid of the computer screen and all that stuff. So uh, I'm not highly technical here. <laughs> but it's already chose my com port and I've already checked that when I did it before so we're going to change that to a k4 p j make sure that's right a k4 p j okay I always leave the uh, LED enabled and just flashes it's inside that PVC so I probably don't even need that uh, it's probably just a waste of battery maybe uh, we'll leave it off this time because like I say it's in that pipe so I don't even need it but I'm gonna put the radio on the frequency already so that way it's all set up I'm not changing nothing else like I say I've added 30 seconds initial delay we'll see if that takes and the AK4 PJ and now I need to turn it on so I'm gonna click the little switch on it. And you can tell, see it's already doing it because I've programmed it so the light's on. So all I did was flip the, uh, get my big fat fingers at it. So I just flipped it on with that little switch. Uh, and then we're gonna hit right configuration. You should see up in here and it's start doing these little asterisks uh, to show that it's doing its job. Confirm written successfully. So now I'm gonna turn it off. I'm gonna unplug the data cable and I'm gonna slip it right back inside of this little case I built. Let me zoom back out, out of there. And that's it. Now I'm gonna turn you. And it's really simple. I mean, that's that's literally all it was to it. So, one four six five six five. That's where I got it at. So, what I'm gonna do is turn it on. Flip the switch. Now there should be a delay. Normally, when I turn it on, it instantly starts doing it. So, for video purposes, I probably should have left it that way because it'll be thirty seconds. But that gave me time to run my mouth <laughs> just a little bit but uh it should go here in just a minute for a moment anyway if everything successfully was written there it goes transmit the little tone for like 15 seconds and then it does the uh, the CWID of my call sign and that actually it says 30 seconds that 30 seconds seems really short <laughs> for some reason but that's it I'm gonna turn it off now because it get annoying while I'm doing that. But uh, I just wanted to make this kind of short, so it's not super long video. So you see what you need. Uh, again, it's really simple to do. You can change a lot of things uh, and tones. I don't know how you change that. I ain't messing with none of that. Uh, 
like tone speeds 50 milliseconds all that sounds good to me tone duration is 15 seconds uh, you can probably lessen that sh or lengthen it or whatever you know, whatever you need to do but every 30 seconds I could probably do that probably every minute or so that would save battery a little bit because I'm not sure what they consider full duty cycle uh, and it don't say that so I'd say I could probably lessen that you know do like every 60 seconds or something uh, actually while I'm programming this thing let's do that that way because that 30 seconds seems awful short so let's just do 60 seconds and show you how easy it is to change this because I mean what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take it back out of its case Data cable hooked up. We're gonna turn it on and we're gonna write. Now let's see. So loop time will be 60 seconds now. Uh, and I could probably even do that every three or four minutes. Uh, so configuration written successfully. That's it. It should be set. It's got a 30 second delay on startup. And then it shouldn't ID but every minute. Uh, and I'm not sure. I haven't done a Fox Hot, so I'm not sure how often I should do that. But not to make this super long video, I just wanted to show how easy it was to, uh, to do that. And that's it. And the way it says, I could probably get like one of them little stubby antennas off of something and put on here that will weaken the uh, signal a little bit we'll find out if I need to do anything like that or not I guess that just depends on what kind of area you're actually uh, using or have access to uh, if the battery doesn't last as long as I like 20 hours seems good but like I say I don't know what their duty cycle is so I don't know I know doing it every so more minutes instead of every 30 seconds would definitely uh, shorten it or lengthen the battery life sorry but if not I've always still got this case and I can rig that up and make it work too that just seemed like overkill that's really it and I've made this I gotta find a way to waterproof this little thing a little better uh, I flattened that down. Let me get over here where you can see. I'm sorry, I'm moving you around, I know, but adjusting for this light's like. But anyway, and then this just comes back off. I might end up gluing this bottom one on. I'm not sure. It should be pretty water resistant since I've got it squished down in there so far. But that's all there is to it. Pretty neat little device. And I just put some, uh, I got some foam down in there so that way it'll go up on the battery here and just keep it all snug up on there so there ain't no rattling or anything like that. And I can just push that down into that foam. And I'm gonna hang it up in a tree. Or sit it on the ground. Whatever. We'll find out. I'll get to put that little Yagi to work and see. Like I say, I'll probably have to get me a uh, attenuation block or something or make me one or something. But my radio attenuates a little, but not much. <clears throat> All right, guys. Y'all have a good one. That's it. Uh, just get on their website and look at them. I mean, they're not overly expensive. They're not super cheap either. Uh, you could probably make one i just by the time i was to get all the stuff to make one and everything i probably would have had this or more in it so that's it pretty fun little little device we'll see let's see if i can find this thing here coming up i might hide it throughout the neighborhood somewhere and see 
So just how easy it is to pick it up. Like I say, Roger was a quarter of a mile away. He was getting an S7, so might be hard. Of course, he's using all many directional antenna too. So uh, I'll try it with this Yagi and see, you know, if I have to get it. Definitely gonna play with it. Uh, but y'all have a good one. That's all I got. Uh, AK4PJ.